She looked beautiful. She looked like a, a Barbie doll. She looked fun and sweet. I remember she has like uh, one million followers on her Instagram. I was like, yeah, I want to be like her. The rise of Kat Torres seemed to be the ultimate rags to riches story. From extreme poverty to international model and wellness influencer, she captivated women all over the world. Everything that I saw it seemed credible, it seemed like she was an ex-model that decided to turn into a life coach. She was in cover of magazines. She was seen with famous people such as Leonardo DiCaprio. She knew a lot of very wealthy and powerful men from all walks of life, finance, government. She, she, she knew everybody. But behind the perfectly curated Instagram posts and the promise of all the love, money, and self-esteem that you always dreamed of lay a very dark reality. She was so blissful, she was so sweet. And then she turned into an absolute narcissistic monster. She took these girls and she convinced them to do whatever she wanted them to do, just like a cult. I was in a strange city, in a strange hotel, having sex with a stranger for money. How did I get here? I think I was probably one of the first victims of human trafficking. She was using me as a slave. Witchcraft, sexual exploitation, and missing women. Then, a desperate search by their families and the FBI. She was, by definition, a master manipulator. You guys are gonna have a really difficult time telling the story, because it's not, it's not a simple story. They are saying she is a danger to society because she can change people's mind with her words. She can too. Can you? Can I? You tell me, can I? I hope I can. She said she was around 12 when she started modeling. She liked wearing red lipstick, and she would have this short Chanel hair. People would always tell her she looked pretty and that she should model. Kat Torres grew up in northern Brazil in a poor neighborhood in the city of Belém. So she was offered modeling jobs, and apparently things with her family got really bad. And her father's alcohol problem got worse. So she decided to model so she could afford not to have to live with her parents anymore. She also began competing in beauty pageants. Miss Caieiras, Cate Torres, 1,73m, 88cm de quadril e 86 de busto. I think sometime when she was around 18, some agency offered her to go to Europe and she decided to go. Hi, my name is Kat Torres. I'm a model and I'm an actress. I'm working in Milan now. I'm Brazilian. And uh, what can I say about me is I'm a very good mood person. So I'm always smiling and uh, I think life is beautiful and we should smile all the time. She was working for many different companies as a lingerie model. She went to South Korea to shoot, she went to Colombia, and it was always lingerie, or like some swimwear. As Kat's modeling career took off, she was booked for photo shoots and began gaining access to the world of celebrity parties. And that soon brought her to the attention of the media. She was in cover of magazines. She was seen with famous people such as Leonardo DiCaprio. The Brazilian press was saying that she was Leonardo DiCaprio's new blonde. Isso é fofoca. Você não pode nem falar sobre isso, gente. Não, mas tem até fotos. Não tem fotos? Tem fotos, mas... Tem fotos mas... suas com o Leonardo DiCaprio. O que é? Amigos? A gente era amigos. Cátia, fala a verdade. 
Era uma, não Bom, era nem assim amigo íntimo, é que a gente ficou na mesma casa. The story about her and Leonardo DiCaprio didn't harm her at all. I think it actually made her name in the Brazilian media. And if she was smart, she could actually have taken advantage of it. But she ended up moving to the US. America was where Kat really started to take off on social media. And it was Instagram that enabled her to build and monetize her own wellness brand, turning followers into clients. Eu tô aqui no meu banheiro para contar para vocês como é a minha rotina de pele, que muita gente tá perguntando, tem pessoas todos os dias eles perguntam lá, já tem anos, eu nunca falei sobre isso no Instagram com vocês. I found Kat in December 2019, when a friend of mine showed me her Instagram. She posted motivational quotes and gave advice. And she always had very beautiful photos. The houses, the hotels, the trips she posted, the places in the city. She had a luxurious life. I remember she has like one million followers on her Instagram. Was like for that time, it was incredible. And I was like, I, I like this. I like what she's talking about, you know? So that is why I started to fall on her. Olá! Kat quickly capitalized on her Instagram success by publishing a motivational self-help book about her life. Né, que não é um livro qualquer, se chama A Voz, né? E ele é um livro que foi dado nos Estados Unidos como paranormal. I read the book. I was like, oh my God, she had like, an incredible life story, like she came from ghetto. I feel motivated when I saw her story, like, yeah, if she can do it, I can get it too, you know. Histórias de superação, crescimento espiritual, felicidade. I was behind the scenes for sure, helping her to produce these things. My name is Colborn Bell. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur and, uh, and the ex-husband of Kat Torres. Oi, gente, tudo bem? Namaste. I worked with her to build out her coaching practice. It was during our time together that she first began her, her coaching sessions. Então, levanta daí, levanta dessa cama. A sua vida e o seu sucesso estão aí esperando por você. Os seus sonhos estão logo ali, depois da esquina. Faz parte do qualquer situação do trabalho. Her goal was helping people really achieve and manifest their dreams for themselves. By 2017, self-care and wellness influencers had exploded online. Anyone could establish themselves as an expert, regardless of their qualifications. And with more than 700 million users, Instagram provided Kat with a captive audience of young women searching for advice and guidance. No video de hoje eu vou mostrar para vocês uma técnica que eu uso desde que eu sou quase criancinha, na verdade, desde os meus 15 anos. Her website and subscription service offered paying customers advice on relationships, business success and spirituality. I felt deeply understood, like never before. I found comfort in her words. It was like therapy for me. After I watched her videos, I could see improvements in the problems that I've been facing for years. She was always promoting her, her consultation, saying like, I can fix your problem, I can help you. Você é capaz de perdoar a si mesmo? Lembre-se disso. Lembre-se não só de dizer que se ama, mas de realmente mostrar com atos. Online video consultations, starting from $150, would unlock exclusive one-on-one -on -one time with Kat. And there was merch, lots of merch. Eu vim aqui falar que a minha loja está com 70% de desconto! Uma das peças de roupas que eu comprei da Kat Torres foi esse body. Eu compraria tudo que a Kat fizesse. Tudo que ela fez, eu comprei. Eu olhar para aquilo e falar, meu Deus, tudo que essa mulher fizer, eu vou comprar. Everything that I saw seemed credible, seemed like she was a ex model that decided to turn into a life coach. I saw that she was hope and she was the person that would guide me into this and then eventually I found out it, it wasn't true. Kat 
drew inspiration from spiritual leaders and self-help gurus from around the world. We spent time in Brazil going to different churches and looking at different religious practices. Kat admired John of God, a controversial Brazilian medium who was later convicted of rape. This is a deity of eight years that God transmitted this energy. She also followed the work of Tony Robbins, an American life and business coach. Who here can remember a time when you had a lot of pain? How many can relate to this? We went to the Tony Robbins conference. She loved Tony Robbins, almost idolized him. She wanted to be a, a, a coach. Combining what she admired about other gurus, Kat successfully rebranded herself. E ali ela compartilhava muito, muitos textos sobre espiritualidade, reflexões, né, sobre sobre a vida, sobre misticismo. A Kat fez eu me sentir especial. Eu sentia muito que a gente tinha uma conexão única, assim, só eu e ela. Todas as minhas dúvidas, todas as minhas inseguranças, os meus questionamentos, as minhas decisões, eu sempre levava para ela primeiro, né, para a gente é, tomar decisões juntas. Yeah, she kind of resembled hope for me. She seemed like she had overcome difficult childhood, violence, abuse, all these traumatic experiences. When I found Kat, I was just in rock bottom point in my life. I had gone out of an abusive relationship, and even before that, I had difficult childhood. I suffered a lot of violence. I was having health issues. I had gone to conventional therapy. I had gone to many doctors. I was losing weight. I was really sick and nothing was working. I just was in a point that I had lost hope in life. And in my mind, like I didn't really see like a future for myself. All these people say that they can find God and God can heal you. So that was kind of like my last shot. I was like, let me see if God is real. Let me see if I can find a spiritual answer. Then I kind of started to turn to the spiritual world. Can I take a sec? Yeah. No, I just got emotional talking about No, it's okay. You're doing really well. Many of the women attracted by her spiritual side disclosed their deepest secrets and insecurities to Kat believing her advice was working. But what they didn't know was that her wellness empire was built on half-truths, lies, and an obsession with money. My name is Luza Tversky. I'm an actor and a writer, and I was Kat's roommate and friend. So yeah, this is it right here. December 26, 2013. That's when we met, and that's, this is where we met. And her apartment was up there somewhere. One of the top floors is where it was. You can see the bridges, you can see the Hudson River, Statue of Liberty, you can see it all from the top of the building. It's possible that she had money saved up from modeling, but it was obvious to me that someone was paying for all this. She had very, very nice clothes. She had very nice purses. There was one particular instance where she had me go down to the lobby of the building that we lived in uh, to pick up an envelope, a uh, FedEx envelope, that was uh, very obviously um, full of cash. And the reasonable assumption is that she was you know, a sugar baby, that she was sleeping with wealthy men who were getting something from being in her presence and they were giving, giving her money in exchange. My understanding is that there was a Russian oligarch who was taking care of her and that he was paying for that apartment. I was like, yeah, she's hot. She's got a Russian billionaire giving her money. Like, good for her. I get to uh, enjoy it too. You know, I got free rent. 
Yeah, so this Russian guy, he's actually Vladimir Putin's friend. For a while, she couldn't even tell me his name. She would only call him by his first letter, by A. When I was in Paris with her, she went to meet him in the south of France, on his yacht. And he gave her this Rolex covered in diamonds. She was like totally in love with him and she would talk to him almost every day. And yeah, he would fetch her from where she was to meet him in places all over the world, sometimes in Russia. Although for me, he was just this very weird looking old man. But they never met the elusive oligarch themselves. So things started getting weird about the time that she had her breast removed. She said that she had a flesh-eating disease uh, that, was eating, uh, that was eating her breast, and it had to be removed and reconstructed. Once she had the surgery, I, I think that most of those men were gone. It seemed to me um, that after she was no longer useful as a, as a sexual conquest, uh, I think those men, you know, weren't there for her. After her operation, Kat tried to move from modeling into acting, but her entanglement with some of Hollywood's elite led her to the psychedelic drug ayahuasca. It has roots in indigenous religious rituals in Brazil and is still popular there. I went with her to an ayahuasca ceremony, all sat on the floor and they were singing Pasha Mama, whatever those weird songs are, chants. After the ayahuasca is when she flipped. That's when she kind of like started going off the deep end. When I met Kat, she was a center of these ayahuasca circles, ceremonies that were happening in the home of an individual in, in the Hollywood Hills. She had told me she was thinking about taking ayahuasca and I told her that I thought it wasn't a good idea. But she was like, oh, they're saying it's good. It will open my eyes. Kat says from a young age, she had a spiritual gift of making revelations and predictions, which she called the voice. After her ayahuasca sessions, it quickly became a key feature of her self-help persona. During our consultations, Kat commented on her entities, what they wanted and how they communicated. For those who are Christians, she said the entity was God. To skeptics, she said they were moments from the past and memories. Sometimes she was like, uh, send a message to me, for example, hi, I, I had a dream with you, I need to talk to you. The voice told her something. She talked about the people who strictly followed her instructions and how happy they were, while the customers who didn't listen to her and the voice were left depressed and suffered disastrous consequences. Mas esse livro foi mesmo, não é psicografado. Ah, eu não sei como se chama o termo, mas foi em transe. Eu escrevi ele todo em transe, foi com uma voz mesmo lá de cima. Some of her clients say they became dependent on Cat and encouraged by her to break off their relationships. She claimed that my relationship was toxic and that if we didn't separate, something very bad would happen to me. I was terrified. I really believed she had a supernatural power of precognition. She also began to isolate others in different ways. Anna was studying in Boston when she says Kat persuaded her to move hundreds of miles to become her live-in assistant. Looking back, I see how she was manipulated me. She really rushed me to do things. So I moved from Massachusetts to New York to live with Kat. For around $2,000 a month, Anna says she was told she would be responsible for looking after Kat's many animals, cooking, laundry, and cleaning. But when she arrived, things were very different. My first impression of Kat was kind of confusing because I was used to seeing her in this perfect Instagram feed, always looking her best. And then when I got to her house, 
it was it was shocking because the house was really messy, really dirty, didn't smell good. She wouldn't be able to do minimal things by herself. Like if she was going to shower, I had to be talking to her the whole time because she cannot stand to be in silence just taking a shower. And the only times I was able to sleep for a few hours in a row is if she was out with one of her boyfriends. And then when she came home, whether it was at 2, 3 a.m., then I had to wake up. Some days I was so exhausted in the middle of the day that I would tell her like, I'm gonna go work out um, in the gym. But I would go down to sleep in the yoga mat just so she wouldn't come after me. So I felt like I'm stuck here. I don't have a way out. Despite working around the clock, Anna says she was never paid by Kat. When she confronted her, Anna says Kat became aggressive, triggering her painful history with domestic violence. Now I see that she was using me as a slave. She wanted to see me doing everything that she wanted, not pay me, and I see that she had satisfaction in it. Like, I clearly see that she was using me, but at that time, somehow I still felt sorrow for her. My mind was just so confused. After three months, Anna finally managed to leave, but the hold Kat had over her meant it took over a year to break contact. So this is the first time that I'm speaking on camera and showing my face because I was so terrified of Kat that I thought if anything that I had to do to expose her, I had to do anonymous. I think I was probably one of the first victims of human trafficking. I see the pattern clearly now that this is what she's been trying to do. It was always her plan was to isolate everyone, whether it was her young boyfriends or the girls from her consultations, and she just wanted to gather everyone to come live with her. My name is Wayne Murray, and I was the neighbor, the uh, human trafficker lived across the street. We'd never talk to them. They weren't very friendly. If I would drive around a little cul-de-sac here, I'd wave. They would never wave back. If you say hello, they would never say hello back. They were just, they kept to themselves. In 2022, Kat moved to Texas with her new husband, Zach, a 21-year-old man she met in California. They rented a five-bedroom mansion in the suburbs. Zach, he was a good-looking guy, very buff. He didn't wear shirts very often. They weren't paying the rent, and so they were evicted. The whole front yard it was just full of bags and boxes and things that they pulled out. This is part of the things that, that, that unusual things that they had. They had, uh, this, these are voodoo dolls. So that was unusual. And then they had uh, bought, uh, herbs, dried herbs in packages that were commercially made and sold. And they were good for romance, for health, for this. But three of them were also good for exorcisms, which I thought was a little unusual. We can go back and Google Cat Torres. And uh, we were shocked at what we found. They referred to her as a cult leader. We also noticed she had um, Facebook pages and things like that where she was going to heal people uh, from different things, as she said, with magic. We didn't have a clue what was going on. As business got busier, Kat increased her prices, charging several hundred dollars for online consultations. Targeting her most dedicated followers she began trying to recruit them to join her in Texas. Desiree, a young Brazilian woman, would later write a book about her experiences. We've translated her words and used an actor to portray her. Kat called me crying and told me that her health was failing and that she was having suicidal thoughts. She wanted me to come to Texas and stay with her for a while. She said she had no one else besides her new husband and that I was one of the people she trusted most. She said I needed to be in Texas the next day. We talked for two hours and without me being able to process what was happening, she bought my tickets. Kat posted on social media, introducing what she called her witch clan. 
She had convinced her clients, Desiree, 21-year-old Letitia Meyer, and a woman we are calling Sol, to move to Austin to live with her. The BBC has discovered at least four more women were almost persuaded. When I arrived, Kat took me to see the witchcraft room. She had set up a large altar with candles and religious images. She prayed to the angels, asking for protection, health, and prosperity for all of us. She did a live on Instagram calling people, say, hey, I'm coming people who wants to come to my house here in Texas. Uh, you can work with me. I had to live in a shelter for a while. I had to live in the streets for a while. So it was like, I don't want to go through this again. I have something to offer. And I said, I'm a yoga teacher. I do tarot readings. Soul moved from Boston to Austin after Kat promised to pay her to help with her wellness business. But she says she was forced to do domestic work 24-7 instead. And the money never materialised. Kat's control over her dark and secretive sorority quickly grew. They say they were led by her into making decisions that would dramatically change the course of their lives. One day, Katusa went to the room with this girl with crystals and tarot cards and candles. In my mind, I think she's doing, you know, some witchcraft. And in the same afternoon, I remember I was coming upstairs, I think it was to basket with laundry, and the girl looked at me in the eyes and said, I want you to drive me to a strip club because it's in there that I'm going to find my husband. Katusa told me there, the voice in her head is saying that I have to go to this place because it's in there. She told me about the Hollywood industry and the experiences she had in Los Angeles, the people she met, the parties she went to, she knew several models and influencers who had become prostitutes in Europe and in the United States. Before I could even ask for an explanation, she said that I was wasting a million dollar opportunity. She talked about the money she had spent on me, including tickets, accommodation, food, furniture for my room, and even the witchcraft she had done. She said if I decided to leave, all these expenses would be charged, and if I didn't pay, she would curse me. She continued saying that in order for me to achieve my goals, I had to prove to God that I should be willing to do whatever it takes to achieve my dreams. Because if success were easy, everyone would be successful. Desiree says Kat persuaded her to work in a strip club, something she believed would be temporary. My name is James, and I work at Maximus Men's Club. She danced here, her name was Brazil, or Chanel. She was very popular. These girls work hard, you know, they, they have to go in there and basically humiliate themselves. They're, they're getting topless, you know, they're having to talk to customers. She worked, I would say, eight days a week. She would come in early and stay late. At the end of the day, I saw that I had earned $700 in fees. Kat counted the money and proposed she manage it herself, keeping everything in the safe in her room. She also insisted that my passport always stayed at home so that I wouldn't run the risk of someone from the club discovering my identity. In two weeks, I had made about $9,000 at the club but Kat demanded that I try to make at least $1,000 a day. Desiree describes how the work she was forced to do began to take a serious toll on her health. All the money went to Kat, and the daily targets she set continued to rise. I tried to talk to Kat again so we could put the club aside and focus on her coaching company. I was exhausted physically and psychologically, and I was still at risk because I was illegal. Kat went on to say, do you realize how much witchcraft I did to get you accepted into the club without a visa? Do you think it was easy? You say you have faith, but you don't trust God and the angels protecting you. Okay. 
Cat continued to seek out new revenue streams and started charging followers for spiritual baths. Cat or one of her assistants would often use this as an opportunity to try and convince the client to come and work for her. I remember her assistant put the light a little bit down. She told me to get in the bathtub. The water was hot. She told me to imagine yourself in the nightclubs, going out, talk to guys, they're gonna give you money, imagining you getting money from them, and bringing luggage, full luggage of money to Kat. And I remember she was saying, do you know you can say no to Kat, and you need to follow what she's telling you to do, and don't tell anyone about it. I was very afraid about it. I was with that bad feeling, that intuition, like something bad could happen to me if I go there to Austin and be with Kat. When at the point I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to be in that situation. Letitia Tupinamba decided not to travel to Austin to move in with Kat. Eu quero vocês todos milionários e ponto final. Só que vender cursinho na internet não estava funcionando mais. Só que eu pensei, tem um site, as pessoas já se prepararam energeticamente, agora elas podem vir até a minha casa e eu vou mostrar para elas o que é ter dinheiro. Então eu quero todo mundo aqui trabalhando comigo. Eu tô fazendo, eu tô trazendo os brasileiros para cá. In the house, the women say Kat introduced a law of silence. They were forbidden from communicating with each other and they couldn't leave their rooms without Kat's permission. As her grip on the women tightened, they say they began to be encouraged down an even more dangerous path. We're never allowed to leave the house. It was very difficult to, you know, get out of the situation because she holds your money, she holds all your information. Kat said, you know, you don't have to keep working at the club if you start to feel bad. Hang out with the guys. I'm sure that several men you've met have approached you asking how much it would cost for time with you. Think about it. What you can make in 15 hours at the club, you can make in one hour with a man. I heard her on the phone with the girl who is in Brazil. She was saying, you even been punished by the voice to be a prostitute in Brazil. I said, okay, I need to get out of here. After 42 days with the help of a former boyfriend, Sol managed to escape, but she says she still feared Cat. This is my favorite. This is like the, it's my attack driver. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to have a competition with that gun to see who's the best. I'm gonna be the best always. Because that gun is so accurate. Her husband at the time, Zach, had at the house, I think it's Texas, right? So about six guns. So it was terrifying something could happen to me because she had my address uh, and all my information, my passport. She took a picture of my passport, took a picture of my drive license. Maya. Ah, tá escondida também, ela com medo. Maya. Desiree writes of how Kat repeatedly threatened her and eventually scared and lost, she gave in to Kat's demand that she work as a prostitute. On the way to meet the client, my legs wouldn't stop shaking. When I opened the bedroom door, many questions haunted me. Could I stop whenever I wanted? If the condom broke, would I get a disease? Could it be an undercover cop and arrest me? What if he killed me? A gente trabalha aqui 24 horas do dia e tem que trabalhar mesmo. E tem que acordar às 5 da manhã e dormir às 2 da manhã. E assim é para todas as pessoas da casa. Então não vai achando que vai chegar aqui, vai ser moleza, que ah, lá, 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 lá. Queridos, acabou o sentimentalismo. Desiree describes how Kat began setting up profiles for her on Sugar Baby and Escort websites. She says she was forced to juggle escort work with performing at the strip club. Prostitution is illegal in Texas. Desiree says Kat would threaten to report her to the police if she ever talked about wanting to stop. I also met multi-millionaire sugar daddies. 
the more powerful they were, the more dangerous and unpredictable. Kat said I needed to get out of my comfort zone to make more money. She established that I could only return home after reaching a daily goal of $3,000. I ended up sleeping on the streets several times because I couldn't reach that. In the name of Mother Mary and your Queen Cat Taurus, the Messiah, I'm Jesus Christ, understand me? During this time, Cat's social media presence became more and more disturbing. You see the mirror? You're gonna lay on the floor in this position like this with your hands here where we can see them. Lay on the floor. It is a film me, film my body, my body, my body. You're gonna lay like this when that green making passes you. Are you filming me? Mm -hmm. Do they understand yes. moms? Moms are right yes. here away from your body. Do not touch each other. Do not touch each other. Around April of 2022, she made an Instagram post threatening me. In the post, she says that she's going to hang my skull, that I was a traitor, that she had welcomed me in her house and I betrayed her trust and I was going to pay with my life um, for what I had done to her. And I just got really scared, like I had panic attack and she was demanding all her followers to tag me. She called me a slave in her post. She says that she made my life hell. Unbeknownst to Kat, both Anna and Sol had filed police reports against her. Meanwhile, the families of Desiree and Letitia had lost all contact with the women and started to become anxious about their whereabouts. Polícia de imigração teria sido acionada em caso de brasileiras desaparecidas no Texas. A gente começa a edição de hoje falando do caso das brasileiras que vieram trabalhar aqui nos Estados Unidos e que, segundo os familiares, estavam desaparecidas por meses. Que conhecem? In Brazil, the story dominated news outlets. The women's family and friends started social media campaigns in a desperate bid to find them. Os amigos, então desesperados, criaram este perfil que reúne informações, dicas, pistas. Chegaram a imaginar que a Desirê havia sido morta nos Estados Unidos. As the search intensified, the Instagram accounts grew. Kat, away on holiday, began a counter-offensive. A única coisa que eu fiz foi dar emprego para as meninas e só, mais nada. E eu falei, vocês vão trabalhar para mim, se vocês trabalharem digno, se vocês forem digna, o salário de vocês vai ser digno. Elas começaram a fazer muito dinheiro. She also ordered Desiree and Letitia Maia to post videos of their own. Eu tô gravando esse vídeo para ordenar que vocês parem de me perseguir, parem de me procurar, parem de perguntar a terceiros sobre o meu paradeiro. Se eu bloqueei todos vocês, tem um motivo. Quer dizer que eu não quero foto nenhum de vocês. Tô muito bem. Eu tenho poder de escolha, eu tenho livre arbítrio que Deus deu para todos nós. Então eu tô vivendo a minha vida e saco, vocês são insuportáveis. Me deixem em paz. Desde a última vez que eu vi eles, eu falei: não me procura mais. Não me procura mais. Eu não quero mais falar com vocês. Quantas vezes eu vou ter que falar? Quantas vezes? As the videos became increasingly bizarre, the families became more and more concerned for the women's safety. Eu venho aqui falar em nome da Cat Torres, porque o mundo corre perigo. A Cat Torres corre perigo. <coughs> Mark Zuckerberg, Vladimir Putin, eles precisam achar a Cat Torres. Eles precisam achar a Cat Torres e eles precisam salvar o mundo da guerra. Isso vai ser uma destruição. Se eles, não, se eles não verem essa mensagem, essas mensagens postadas aqui nesse Instagram, o mundo vai estar em destruição. When the families uncovered the women's escort profiles and the address of the Austin house, Kat sent plane tickets for the women to join her in Maine. Os pais estão desesperados e desconfiam que ela possa estar envolvida num esquema de tráfico humano e prostituição. I started to contact many people to get Kat to be arrested. I did an online report to the FBI exposing everything that I had from Kat because at that point I saw that she was involved in prostituting girls. I was seeing the posts that she was doing and I was like, she's keeping other girls. This person is very dangerous and she has already threatened to kill me and I'm, I'm trying to save my life. Kat continued to threaten people on social media, including her husband's father. I want you to f die. I hope you listen to this, you understand this. 
die. Leave me and my family alone. But the police were now on their trail. Kat was on the road when a law enforcement officer called to check the girls weren't being held against their will. I guess that's Desiree right next to you? Yes, that's me. Desiree, right. did you color your hair? Uh, yeah, but a long time. Oh, okay. I guess for some reason I thought it was black. No. Uh, no? No, okay. <laughs> My mistake. And how are you like in uh, America so far? Very nice. Is everybody treating you kindly? Yes. And are you well? Yes. You're doing well? Yes. And sounds? You look like you're doing well. I don't see what the issue is. So. And again, they came here on their own. They didn't come here for me. They are helping me out, yeah. But I just don't want anything bad to happen to them. What Kat didn't know is that the call had been secretly recorded, including moments before when she has heard threatening the women. Gente, eles são muito truqueiro. Ele é detetive. Muito cuidado. Pelo amor de Deus, eu vou dar um chute daqui em vocês. Vocês falam alguma coisa? Dá um grito. Eu não. A law enforcement officer eventually convinced Kat to visit a police station in Maine. When they came in, what was kind of concerning was the girls' behavior. They were uh, definitely very closed off, and uh, it, that is uh, fairly common with, with human trafficking survivors. Uh, they have a severe distrust for law enforcement, usually ingrained by the trafficker. Getting inside with Kat and, and when we were doing the interview, and she really didn't give a model of what her business was for, how it worked. It just said that the girls worked with her and, and she was a life coach for other girls. There's also another immediate red flag where this is what she does. She takes these young women under her wing. She said it was there was nothing to see here. It was all made up by haters. Human traffickers aren't always like in the movies uh, where you have maybe a gang that, that kidnap people. It's far more common that it's someone you trust. It's more like there, a relationship is built and, and trust is gained, and it's it, grooming tactics like that. Sometimes in these human trafficking organizations, the victims have a sort of quota to make, and they need to bring a certain amount of money in every day, or they could be physically abused, they could be withheld, and uh, part of that isolation is, is financial isolation, and so that the victim is dependent on the trafficker. That's when I realized all the manipulation and brainwashing I had suffered at Kat's hands. She was promising people things that she could never do for them. She took these girls and she convinced them to do whatever she wanted them to do. Just like a cult. She became like a cult leader. Catiúcia Torres, de 34 anos, agora está presa no Brasil por suspeita de manter pessoas em condições análogas à escravidão. Cat was deported back to Brazil, facing charges of human trafficking, slave labor and medical fraud. Kat has been in prison since November 2022. Over 20 women have reported being scammed or exploited by her, many of whom the BBC has spoken to. The first trial, which dealt with Desiree's allegations, took place last year behind closed doors. A number of other women also testified. Now, Kat is awaiting the verdict. Before, I will describe myself as a model, as a guru. Now I describe myself as a prisoner. A team from BBC Eye Investigations and BBC News Brazil gained a rare court order to interview Kat in prison. This is the first time since her arrest that Kat is being interviewed. I am one year and a half in jail, in real jail, with real people that commit, committed real crimes. We, we're talking about people that killed like 10 people, 15 people. When I was seeing the, the, the people testifying, 
They were saying so many lies, so many lies that at one point I couldn't stop laughing. I believe maybe I'm here for more 20 days, 10 more days, because there is no proof, so there is no crime, there is no way. Why is the judge keeping you in prison if you because don't Because the to people be are saying that I am a, a problem outside, that I can take the minds of the people and change them. People are saying, I am a fake guru, but at the same time, they're also saying that I'm so real and so dangerous that I can take his mind or whoever mind and change his mind. This is written in my paper. So I'm only talking what is written in my paper. It says she is a uh, danger to society because she can change people's mind with her words. She can too. Can you? Can I? You tell me, can I? I hope I can. I had a voice that spoke with me and my whole life I would tell people, oh, so the voice is saying this to you, the voice is saying that to you, the voice is saying this. People would just bend down to me and be like, oh my God, give me like the, the, some advice, please. Like this, very rich people, very powerful people. She was a by definition, a, a master manipulator, although I believe her intent in that manipulation was positive. She knew exactly what she was doing. She was trying to tell the courthouse, no, it was not my intention, and that she was not a pimp. You can fool them, but you cannot fool me. I was living in there with you. Nobody lived with me. No women lived with me other than my dog. That, was, that is a girl, my cat that is a girl. No women live with me. We've seen messages from you inviting young women to live Man, with you. Man, if you did not see a message in the federal police, you cannot believe this message is from me. There is no way I send a message to a person saying, come to live with me in America, I'm going to enslave you, or are you going to work for me? In my house, nobody worked. I want to say... So do you think the messages that we've seen from multiple women are fake? Absolutely, yes. What about the bank transfers from Desiree, where she's depositing money this into same, your account? The same thing. You're saying that's completely fake? No, she They never sent you money? What, no, whatever she could use from me, she did. But I didn't know what she was doing. You didn't know she was sending you money? Yes, I know she was sending me money to take Ubers. Some and I of said, the transfers yes. were 600 pounds. Was she taking a 600 pound Uber? Yeah, she has told me that. I have seen some Uber receipts that was like 3,000, 4,000 dollars per month. Many of the women we spoke to say they are still experiencing post-traumatic stress. In a split second, choosing to hit like and follow had unimaginable consequences. Until recently, I still heard her in my head. I was thinking about giving up on life, about suicide, because I invested my whole life in her. I had to do therapy. It's been almost two to three years that I'm, I've been doing therapy. Um, and it's just a lot of work that I had to do to be able to talk about this. Ana disse que você manteve ela em casa, trabalhando como se fosse uma escrava, que você não pagou o valor que você tinha acordado com ela e que você ameaçou ela. Ah. A gente leu um post nas redes sociais em que você diz que, de fato, manteve ela como escrava e ah. que o crânio dela seria pendurado na sua casa. Deus me livre! E que ela pagaria com a vida dela pelo que ela fez contra você. Eu não sei quem postou isso, mas não fui eu. Isso estava na sua conta do Instagram. Eu não sei quem foi, nem se foi na minha conta do Instagram, mas eu não postei isso. Agora que eu lembrei quem a Ana é e ela nunca trabalhou na minha casa. Ela ficou na minha casa por alguns dias e foi embora. How does it make you feel when you're hearing that former clients are traumatized? I don't believe it. I have to say they are absolutely ridiculous and that they need to run back to their parents. 
Why do you think they'd make something like that up? Because they want media. Because they want to be somebody. They want to talk about it. It's not real. It's not true. I've been working with this for nine years and I have 14,000 clients and I had many people that were very jealous about the money I was making. I charged a lot of money to do it. Did you believe in the advice you were giving these women? Oh yeah. I believe a thousand percent. I will look in their eyes and I will go to sleep and I will wake up in the morning thinking about the advice I give to them. In jail still, I think about the advice I give it to them. I never, ever was wrong, ever. I don't, I don't regret one single, one single word I said, I don't regret. It's like, we are all afraid that whenever she gets out, she's actually gonna do it again. The judges in Brazil already ruled that she cannot have access to the internet. But how can you stop someone to have access to the internet when they are out of jail, you know? So there is people that are born with no talents. And there are people that are born with all talents. I think it's me. I, I used to sing in California, so people want me to sing. I have so many people talking to me what, what I should do and where I should go. Fame will catch me wherever I am. Throughout this interview, we've put very serious allegations to you, human trafficking, sexual exploitation, modern slavery, and in response you've said you've, you were proud of your advice, you've laughed, you've said that they're ridiculous, they're liars. Do you take any accountability for any of these allegations? Absolutely not. Zero. And do you think you deserve to face any punishment or justice? Absolutely not. What I want and I need is justice. What I want to do with my lawyer is justice. I don't deserve to be here. I didn't deserve to be here not even one day in my life. You choose to believe whatever you choose to believe. I can tell you I'm Jesus and, and you can see Jesus or you can see the devil. That's it. Olha lá, hein? Você vai descobrir se eu tenho poder ou não depois. Thank you very much. Então, ameaça? I didn't like her. <laughs> I'm not fully recovered yet. I've had a challenging year. I was sexually exploited, enslaved, and imprisoned. I hope my story serves as a warning. The rise in social media has absolutely created uh, almost like a a portal or an avenue for human trafficking. It has developed just a huge communication network for uh, human trafficking in general. And it's just so easier, so much easier to groom individuals and victims. I feel better because I know she's in jail. And my hopes is that the more I talk about it and more victims are gonna come out and you know tell their stories, go to the police, go to the authorities, so people see that this is a really criminal and serious case. It's not just some Instagram drama as some people might have thought. If you feel distressed by the references in this program, please speak to a health professional or an organization that offers support such as Befrienders Worldwide at www.befrienders.org.